We're going to explore some of the column number limits in the Oracle database. So I want to create a table with a thousand columns. Now you probably don't want to see me type in 1000 columns of DDL. That won't be the most interesting video. So we'll write a little program to do a little anonymous block. So I'll declare, um, I've got a little variable called SQL here. It's a clob. It starts off as create table big col with a C1. That's our first column. And then I'll loop from two to 1000 and I'll simply add a new column name. So it'll be C2 integer, C3 integer, etc., up to 1000. Uh, now we'll just close off be the closing bracket and run it with execute immediate. And there we go, that has created our table called big col. And if we even do a describe on it, you can see there's our 1000 columns. Now the question is, is that the limit? Well, we can prove that. We can simply try add one column to it and see what happens. So I'll do alter table, try add a new column. That's just a date, could be any data type. And as you can see, we get an error. The maximum number of columns in a table is 1000. That's been there, I think, since Oracle 8, Oracle 7, I think it was 255. We banged it up to 1000 as Oracle 8, and it's been there ever since. However, in the classic Bill Gatesism of 64K should be enough for anyone, I've always thought 1000 columns should be enough for anyone, but the world has changed. And it's not necessarily in terms of pure data modeling. It's more the fact that in a lot of machine learning models nowadays, what they'll often do as a first step is they'll take rows of data and pivot it to become columns. Machine learning models often prefer all their data transposed into columns. What that can mean is when applying certain machine learning models, it's effectively dynamically trying to create a table with more than 1,000 columns. So we wanted to do something to help address that. And in 23C, we've adjusted the column level limit to be more than 1,000 columns. Now, before you get access to those extra columns, one of the things we've done is to help um, What's the best way? Uh, encourage you that maybe tables with more than 1,000 columns isn't something that you do day to day. We've got a parameter here that you can set. You can see it's a max columns and it's set to standard. If it's set to standard, that means 1,000 columns remains the upper limit. If you go ahead and run an alter system and change that to extended, then what you've now got is the ability to access more than that many columns, up to 4,096. Just to prove this works, let me rerun my little uh, PL SQL block here. I'll start with create table big col, but this time what I'll do is I'll loop around from two up to 3,000. I'll just pick 3,000 columns, simply add in each column as we loop around, and then run it with execute immediate again. And so it takes a little bit longer, and yes, it actually managed to create the table. So let's now describe it, and you can see, rather than me typing it in, we can see there are actually 3,000 columns up there. So you can now have up to 4,096 columns. Hopefully the addition of that parameter gives you a, a suggestion that this is not something you'll want to do unless you really need to. Uh, the way we implement it is we have to, have to piece these blocks together into multiple blocks to handle such massive rows. So there will be a slight cost in querying tables with massive numbers of columns. That's not normally a drama for machine learning models because they often churn away for some time anyway, going through all the permutations of data. But it's not something you'd probably want to be exploring for OTP systems. But 4,096 columns, they're coming in 23C.